Um, hello everyone. So um, today's lesson is about Gibbs free energy. So after after learning what the second law of thermodynamics is, um, Gibbs free energy comes hand in hand to balance between the quantities of enthalpy and entropy. So in predicting the spontaneity of a process, the enthalpy factor the enthalpy factor is considered in conjunction with entropy factor. So we have enthalpy and entropy in predicting the spontaneity of a process, right? So um, if you remember that we can determine if the process is, is spontaneous or not in what? In its entropy universe. If it's in standard condition, we put a degree sign here. So this is what we look at when predicting uh, the spontaneity of a process. However, in Gibbs free method, I mean free energy, um, the balance between enthalpy and entropy factor are considered. So um, it is by William Gibbs and we have introduced G in this lesson. So to start, we have the equation G equals H minus T times S. So G here is the Gibbs free energy. G is an energy, so we expect that the unit is either joule or kilojoule. And the temperature here, this is the, this is the enthalpy, the the temperature temperature in kelvin and the entropy entropy okay so um if it's in constant um constant conditions um this is your formula so the change in gibbs free energy is equal to the change in enthalpy minus temperature times the change in entropy and if it's in standard condition, we just put the degree sign above the entropy, enthalpy, and the Gibbs free energy. Um, so please remember that um, in standard conditions, the temperature the temperature is in Kelvin. T is in Kelvin and if it's in standard conditions the T here is equal to 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is one atmospheric pressure to convert this into um, Kelvin this should be um, uh, whatever the degrees of Celsius uh, degrees given here should always be 25 degrees okay standard condition man and it's 25 plus 273 so in kelvin this is plus 273 and the temperature will become 298 kelvin always okay if makita mag circle that means that it is in standard conditions and the kelvin is the temperature is in kelvin which is 298 Mm, we have this uh, notes here that when the change in Gibbs free energy is negative or less than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. The reaction is spontaneous. So it's different from the entropy change. So if you remember in entropy change, um, if greater than zero, sha, this process is spontaneous. But in Gibbs free energy, like if you remember, no, in change in entropy, it is spontaneous if it's greater than zero. Spontaneous. But in Gibbs free energy, if it's less than zero, the reaction is spontaneous. Otherwise, if it's greater than zero or the change in change in Gibbs free energy is positive, the process is non-spontaneous.
So non-spontaneous in the forward direction, which means um, work must be supplied to make it work. So note from the above that delta G delta G is equal to delta H in standard conditions T S. So of course if if um, you have a greater value for entropy um, it is um, spontaneous because this would be I uh, know if you have a greater um, entropy value then the gives free energy will be negative but the reaction would still be spontaneous so what happens if the gives free energy is exactly equal to zero so the process is at equilibrium so this actually happens there are processes na um they reach the equilibrium so the reaction stops or it it's it becomes stable or no reaction is happening at that moment or at that given temperature so um, we can also determine if the reaction is spontaneous or not without really solving for the Gibbs free energy value. So you just remember these points. Okay, so if your enthalpy, your H or your enthalpy is negative and your entropy is positive and your Gibbs free energy is always negative, this reaction is spontaneous at all temperature. If it's positive, the enthalpy negative and always positive, then spontaneous at all temperature. If both are positive and the Gibbs free energy is negative at high temperature, of course it will be negative if taas imohang temperature in Kelvin, it is spontaneous at high temperatures. So if both are positive and the Gibbs free energy is positive, it means that low ang yahang temperature. So this is non-spontaneous at low temperature. If both enthalpy and entropy are negative and the Gibbs free energy is negative at low temperature, spontaneous at low temperature. So again, um, if negative pod ang duha and it's positive at high temperature, non-spontaneous ang, ang reaction. So you can just... Ano, uh, um, you just remember that if ang Gibbs free energy is negative, this reaction is spontaneous. Okay, so whether if it's in high or low temperature, as long as the Gibbs free energy is negative, the process is spontaneous. Okay, so moving on, we have this example. Uh, we have this formula. If you remember in enthalpy, we have we still have a similar formula. We have summation of n change in enthalpy in standard condition products minus n reactants. And also in entropy in standard conditions, we have summation of n. Products minus delta n h mm. reactants for Gibbs free energy. We also use this when the Gibbs free energy for each compound or molecule in our in our reaction is given. So consider this sample problem number one. Okay, so um, if just to check if you're watching this video, you can uh, you can confirm if the answer is indeed uh, wait.
the answer control answer is positive 23.7 kilojoule okay so this should be the answer using this formula so delete and i'll show you one by one because you just have to plug in the values okay as an example for solving for the gibbs free energy at standard conditions a drying agent has the chemical composition of CaSO4. Calculate the delta G at 25 degrees Celsius for the following reaction, which has a standard entropy change value of 100, negative 139.7 joule per Kelvin. So we have, um, we have the following givens. From the problem, we have the delta S of the reaction, negative 139.7 joule per Kelvin. And also, the enthalpy for this reaction to occur, so it's um, 18.0 kilojoule to be released because since it's negative so we just simply use the equation given um, we have delta G so we already know this it's the given in in the formula this is delta um, enthalpy change 18.0 kilojoule so what is the temperature so this is the given is 25 degrees celsius and since it's in standard conditions this will become 298 kelvin since we have added 273 for the temperature and for the entropy this is negative 139.7 joule per kelvin and notice that um, the given ent enthalpy here is kilojoule so we will have to convert this joule here into kilojoule okay so to convert to convert we just multiply this as we have 1 kilojoule over 1000 joule and then we cancel the joules here and the kelvin so we will left with kilojoule so the answer here the final answer would be positive 23.63 kilojoule therefore the process is non spontaneous in the forward direction which also means that energy is required for this reaction to happen for stem a b and d except stem c for a b b and d you answer this one this problem and uh, submit it in the submission bin in Google Classroom. So this might be a little different to what uh, to what I have given earlier. So note that the given here is um, enthalpy of formation ni carbon in diamond form. Wala 
Tai Gyata Dere. Right? And likewise, for the entropy, ang given niya is ang mga entropy sa each molecule. We have carbon and carbon in diamond form and in carbon in graphite. So this actual this process is actually a process of ano, um, having diamond turning in back into stone. So if you can remember um, graphites or stone near volcanoes, stones near volcanoes, if if exposed in high temperatures, they become diamonds, right? So this process is in reverse. So um, the process is from diamond to um, stone or graphite. So the process here is for cooling down, the cooling down. Okay. So I guess just a hint. Your steps should contain the following. Step one, solve for delta H of the reaction. You already know the formula for this. Then solve for the entropy of the reaction. You also know the formula for this. Katoranin summation of N times the enthalpy or entropy. And then you should solve for the G using this one. So this is easy. Okay, so um, this is just between you and me who's listening. So if you are if you are answering it um, on your own, you put a star in your um, upper right corner of your paper when you submit. So don't let um, don't let your classmate know that. Um, uh, that you're putting the star there. So you can let him or her copy, but um, just to know that you're an original, you're the original who answered it without really copying, you put a star. Okay? So, for STEM C, this is for um, for A, B, C, and D. So, isa lang ang answer and the stem C, okay? So, um, this is um, the problem. Given this um, reaction and given this values of entropy, enthalpy, and gives free energy of CaCl2, calculate the temperature. Calculate the temperature. So, I think the steps here would include um, similar to the above. Calculate, calculate delta H, calculate entropy, delta S, and calculate delta S, and then you calculate for the, the given, um, the uh, gives free energy is already given, so you just have to calculate for what? T. So, given that delta G you calculate for the T here. Okay? So, same instruction if you're answering this on your own don't tell your classmates who's copying your answer so just want to know if you have answered this on your own just put a star on this side of your paper okay okay so that's it for gives free energy thank you for listening goodbye <laughs>